and I want to welcome everyone to our six, uh, six o'clock regular meeting. And I'd ask <clears throat> everyone to rise uh, for Commissioner Booker, who's going to lead us in the invocation, and Commissioner Quinn, who's going to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you with bowed heads and a humble heart, thanking you for this day. Thanking you, Heavenly Father, for waking us up this morning with breath in our bodies. Thanking you, Heavenly Father, for showing up big in our community, keeping us safe, bringing healing to this land, Heavenly Father, during this pandemic. And Heavenly Father, we thank you for keeping our men and women of the military safe, near and far, as they protect us, protect us every day. Heavenly Father, we ask now that you bless this meeting tonight. That is all of you and none of us. We ask all these things in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Please join me in the pledge. pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Uh, thank you, commissioners, and uh, y'all can be seated. Uh, we have no um, public comment uh, signees tonight, so we'll move to next item. Mr. Chairman, I uh, propose to add a motion to the uh, item to the agenda, item number 21, to publish the agenda to uh, consider approving a contract for services with Nationwide Retirement Solutions and approving a 401A trust agreement with Nationwide Trust Company for provisions of 401A defined contribution plan service. Second. We have a motion and a second uh, to add uh, item 21. Any discussion? I'll call the motion. All those in favor of signify by raising your right hand. That is unanimous. Mr. Chairman, I move to add item number 22 to the published agenda for authorizing increase in revenues and expenses in the amount of $76,000 with funded provided by the Capital Projects Fund balance for the purchase replacement of additional rock for the One Georgia Grant revetment maintenance project. Second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, any discussion? I call the motion. All those in favor to, uh, for adding item 22 to the agenda, signify by raising your right hand. And that is unanimous. <coughs> Thank you, commissioners. All right, commission presentations and announcement. Item one, present a check to the Fraternal Order of Police in the amount of $8,254.20 and a check to the Golden Isles Emerald Society in the amount of $8,254.20. The funds were raised at the Battle of the Badges softball game played by the Glen County Police and Fire Departments. Good evening, Commissioners. Thank you for allowing us the opportunity, uh, the time to present these checks. The checks are in route. Um, they will be here in just a moment. Um, Captain Stalvey was on the way, had a little bit of car trouble, so he, he's coming. Um, unfortunately, the Emerald Society Fire Department members could not be present. They're working right now and are actually on a call for service, and so they're not able to be here, but um, we can still give you some, some details on, on what we were able to raise. I'd like to ask Officer Josh Williams to come up. Um, and I'd like to take this opportunity, if I, if I could, to, to recognize Officer Josh Williams. He was the, the heart and soul of, of this uh, charity softball game. He, uh, he came up with the idea last year, the first year that we did it, and um, last year was very successful. And then Officer Williams this year, uh, he and his, uh, his wife put in just a, a tremendous amount of work and spearheaded everything. And so I'd like to recognize him for his hard work in, in making, this, uh, making this come together and happen. And he may be able to provide a few more numbers on exactly what we raised. So. Yep, sure. go ahead, Josh. Uh, good evening, commissioners. How are you? Doing great. I just wanted to take the time to thank our sponsors and everyone that was involved in this event. Um, we had a lot of people donate money for a great cause. Um, we had uh, one in particular, uh, Frank Salvati, who was really heavily involved uh, with this. And uh, I just want to thank everyone for donating and helping support the cause. Thank you, sir. Yep. Uh, we raised roughly it was a little less than seventeen thousand dollars. Yeah, that's a good amount. Is that yeah. the checks coming the in checks there? Are here. The checks are here. 
Yeah, and I would like to add to that that uh, last year we raised roughly a um, little shy of ten thousand. Little shy of ten thousand last year, and this year a little shy of seventeen thousand. Yeah. So how I, much? How much last year? Last year a little shy of ten thousand, and this year a little little shy of seventeen thousand. Oh, so um, I think that's a, a huge improvement, and we're only hoping that things can get bigger and brighter every year that we can continue to provide for for these tremendous events that provide for the needy children in our community. So yes. Mm -hmm. Captain Stalby is here, and we have these these checks again. Uh, the Emerald Society is not able to make it at this time, um, but we would like to present uh, the check to the Fraternal Order of Police. And Captain Stalby is the representative from the Fraternal Order of Police. I apologize for being late. My car broke down in the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So once we actually ended up. Uh, taking back uh, a few expenses that we needed to and things of that nature and split the amount. Uh, the total amount being presented um, to the Fraternal Order of Police is $8,380 that they'll be able to use for their Cops and Kids initiative that they do every Christmas time. So, Great. Josh, would you like to present that to Captain Salvi? Would you like to We can. There's nobody here from the fire department. We'll just hold it up. Yeah, that'd be fine. Okay. We can get a photo op with the commissioners. No problem. Uh, Go up front. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll just leave job well done yeah excellent excellent and had a lot of fun yes the police did win just so everyone knows <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. well we're not going we're not going to choose sides from up here so right, thank you very much um, <clears throat> okay item two uh, receiving address from the Brunswick Golden Isles Chamber of Commerce uh, from Executive Director Ralph Steffens. Ralph, if you come up. Good evening, Commissioners. Mr. Chairman, thank you for having me today. Um, I simply want to just come and say thank you um, for your service to our community. Um, Commi Chairman Browning, Dr. Murphy and Commissioner uh, Coleman, we thank you for your long-standing service to our community and all the positive efforts you've made during your service to our community. And we have a small token of our appreciation this evening as well. Thank you very much. Uh, th thank you, Ralph. And um, I'm just going to tell you, these guys probably appreciate that. Thank you, because they sure don't hear a lot of them. <laughs> so, 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 yeah. Yeah, let's, let's, let's go down and stand with Ralph. That was awful nice of him. And, uh, okay, <coughs> item three, presentations to the 2020 chairman 
and vice chairman. Um, how are we gonna do this? You wanna? I no idea. <clears throat> I'm gonna let you. Uh, I'm gonna pass the gavel over to you, and you take control. All right, I will. <laughs> Chairman, token of appreciation. Thank you for your service as chairman. A gift from the commission. And I have one as well. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Well, I'm sure everyone wants to see what we might be getting. All right. Nice gavel. My wife can use to gavel me down. And uh, it says Bill Brunson, Glen County Board. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope this one Here. says Mike Browning. So Here, you I'm gave right. me yours. There you go. There you go. Well, you've already given me your gavel, so Thank I've you. got one. I got two of them now. Thank you very much. Yeah. It's been an honor to serve the chairman this year. Yeah, let me, um, I'm going to take the liberty to say a few words. Thank you, Bill. Um, it's it's a it, it's an honor to serve on the board of commissioners of Glen County, and it's a, a little higher honor, added honor, to serve as a chairman of the board. Uh, it's it's a wonderful county we have, we have a lot going on, and uh, you know it really takes the support of all the commissioners. Uh, you know, if they all want to get out there and go off in different directions and make it tough, they could certainly do that. But we got a, we got a board of commissioners that's, uh, uh, in my view, got as much smarts amongst them as any board has ever had. Look, got a lot of common sense, uh, and they got a, got a lot of goodwill in the heart, and uh, they put the county first. So it helps us all get on the same page uh, quicker. Uh, than, than we otherwise might be able to do. And, uh, and we get there for all the right reasons normally. Sometimes, you know, we have a hard time getting there, but most of the time we get there fairly quickly because we just have to see things the same way. So I appreciate all their support. And I, in particular, uh, <clears throat> I just want to say to Bill, uh, you know, it helps when you're chairman to when you're looking at things and seeing things, to be able to call somebody and bounce something off of him. And I bounce so much off of him, he is bruised from top to bottom, uh, front to back, and uh, he probably feels like he's been beat up on. But he's always been there when I called. And uh, so, you know, help me, help me understand this. Uh, where are we going with this? And uh, he's top notch. That's because uh, I didn't have caller ID, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but, but Bill's always been there, not because of me, but because of the county. The county he loves so much. And so, Bill, I thank you and appreciate uh, who you are and what you mean for this county and what you meant for, for me as chairman. So. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It's been an honor. Okay. Um, that completes item three. Item four, presentations to the outgoing commissioners. Uh, the outgoing commissioners, Michael Browning, District 1 Commissioner, Dr. Peter Murphy, District 2 Commissioner, and Bob Coleman, at-large, Post 2 Commissioner. Um, I'm going to say a few words about Dr. Peter Murphy and Bob Coleman and make presentations to them. Uh, starting with Commissioner Bob Coleman. Commissioner Coleman, he is our senior, what I would call our senior commissioner. He has been on the board for 12 years. Um, he is as dedicated as anybody I have ever seen. And Bob speaks his mind. You know where he stands on the issue. Once he quits talking, you kind of know where he stands. <laughs> and uh, he, sh he hammers it in pretty good, but Bob, we respect you for that. We love you for that. Um, during his 12 years, Bob's a past board vice chair. Um, 
some of the issues. We're not going to talk about a whole lot of them, but some of the key issues. And if I miss any of them, Bob, you can fill in. But uh, the causeway divider uh, probably wouldn't happen without Bob. Uh, I mean, he, he fought for that. When the jail expansion, the old jail that's now been torn down, while it was still there and the idea to move it over to the next block, to H, to IJ block, Bob opposed that, but he didn't just oppose it, he fought to keep that jail from being expanded to the next block. And that's the block where the park is now, the Veterans Memorial Park. Uh, Bob, anybody that loves animals in this town, Bob Coleman, Bob and Sherry, she's sitting out there today. Um, and when Bob decided that it was time for a new animal control shelter, he was not behind it 100%, he was behind it 10,000%. And as you know, it's under construction right now, new animal control facility. Bob was a member of the Veterans Memorial Park Committee, the committee that met with staff and met with architects and determined, made the decisions what was going to go on the H, uh, IJ block and have what we have out there today. Uh, very important work and their work product, uh, the result of what they did with Bob on there leading the way. Um, I've, I've heard nothing but good about that part. So, um, Bob, I just want to thank you on behalf of the fellow commissioners and tell you, job well done. And uh, I'm going to turn it over to you. If you want to make some comments. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. I, I really, uh, really do appreciate those kind words. Uh, Folks, 12 years sitting up here is a long time, and, and I, I tell you, I'm, I, I don't know where the time went, quite frankly. I can remember my first time I sat down up here. Um, <coughs> excuse me. It was, um, was kind of like walking out in a real thick forest. You, you really didn't know what direction to go in. You just had to sit in there, sit there and listen. And... Um, it took me a while. Uh, I, I think it takes everybody a while when they when they take the first seat up here to just get in the groove. But um, I uh, I will say uh, it's been a trip, <laughs> and it's been uh, um, a very uh, a very big education to me as to what has. Uh, transpired over the last 12 years all the ups and downs and ins and outs that the county's been in and uh, I'm just proud to say I, I was a part of it uh, I thank you all my supporters uh, that have have stuck with me all these years uh, I know I was on the tail end on a lot of one six votes up here and <coughs> excuse me but uh, it's like Mike said, I, I, uh, I have my own um, feelings about things, and so what if everybody didn't um, agree with me? Uh, for that matter, the majority, <laughs> six, six of the seven of us didn't agree with me. So, it, but it, 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 it's there again. That's why there's uh, the odd number that we have up here, and. Uh, but but I've enjoyed uh, just working with the different guys that's come through in these these three terms that I've been here, and I just like to thank uh, my uh, my lovely wife Sherry. She's she's put in uh, just about as many hours as I have here, and uh, been a faithful uh, observer out there. Blinked her eyes and waved her fingers when she needed to, and. <laughs> Uh, I'm very proud to say I'm I'm uh, happy she's here. Uh, when we were coming in tonight, and she made the first one and she made the last one and made a whole lot of meetings in between. And uh, that was I really appreciate your support all these years. But uh, I really do. I love you. Mr. 
excuse me. Um, but my fellow, <coughs> my fellow commissioners, I, I really do uh, appreciate the, the opportunity I've had to, to be here with you guys and, and uh, work through this thing. And it's just been a, a, a very big experience in many, many different ways. And uh, thank you again for your support and, and all the things that we've gotten accomplished uh, the last four years, eight years, 12 years. And um, I just hope that uh, the things that we do have that are fixed assets for the county now are gonna be here for many years to come. Thank you. Uh, before we um, present you with the plaque, we're going we're gonna to get, get the other two commissioners done, and then we'll all do the plaque at the same time. So, um, <clears throat> Dr. Peter Murphy, District 2 Commissioner. Um, as many of you know, Dr. Murphy, he was a, uh, what, thoracic surgeon, heart surgeon? We call them heart surgeons. We <coughs> call them cardiothoracic surgeons. Man, don't put that big word on me. Cardio, <laughs> cardiothoracic surgeon, and I'm sure he was a heck of a surgeon when he was in the operating room. Um, I never knew the guy. Come to know a lot about him in four years, and uh, we need more like him. We need more like him in a lot of positions here in Glen County. Very dedicated man. Dr. Murphy's been on the board for four years. He represents District 2, which is St. Simons, Sea Island, Jekyll. Um, he, he has a passion unequal by anybody when it comes to representing those that uh, have put you in office and those that entrust you to do the best you can, he has lived up to that. Um, some of the things that Dr. Murphy has been involved in, it wouldn't have happened without his leadership. Uh, tree ordinance on St. Simons took a lot of work and took a lot of effort, took a long time to get it done. But he stuck with it and he got it done. And uh, traffic issues which are forever ongoing issue on St. Simons Island. Uh, a board just previous to him coming on had uh, set him up pretty good with some money to deal with in SPLOS to deal with traffic issues over there. Uh, just some decisions had been made and he had to follow up and help carry him out and he's done a wonderful job of that. Uh, but it was all about trying to keep traffic moving as best we can in those areas that we could have the biggest impact. And uh, a lot of meetings, a lot of meetings about what we're gonna do and where we're gonna do it, and how we're gonna do it, when we're gonna do it, we're gonna do it daytime, nighttime. Um, a lot of phone calls, just a lot that goes into that. And he's hung right in there and been a great steward leading all that effort and uh, needs to be commended for what he's done there. And uh, one, one issue that most everybody's probably heard about and all, it's taking a lot of time and trying to figure out how you handle it, Frat Beach, believe it or not. Um, Frat Beach is a big issue for us to have to deal with, with trying to find the right balance and, 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 and what we can do and what we can't do. We're limited in one way uh, as a government, what we can do about telling people on a public beach what they can do and can't do, but I think uh, I think we've always found a good balance. And uh, but that was after a lot of discussion and meetings and hard work on it. Uh, you know, there was a there was a point in time when it looked like we were going to put a fence around the oak trees at Neptune Park, and uh, that didn't happen. And it didn't happen largely because of um, Commissioner Murphy. Uh, he saw the value in having that area remain open 
and have those picnic tables accessible and have people be able to enjoy the trees and the shade in that area. And uh, he and uh, really Dave Austin and staff were able to come up with a, with a different solution than what we were looking at, and it has worked out great. But that is, that comes from someone that cares about the community and looking to do the best, find the best possible remedy, uh, you know, that has an impact on our citizens, which is what it's all about every day, and done a wonderful job with that. Uh, one of the things that most people won't notice, but uh, we were aware of, and uh, our county pension plan, which the current, the current, if you will, what, what, what's been around for years and years, uh, all the liability of the funding of that plan fell on the taxpayer's shoulders, okay? It was a great pension plan for our employees, and, and but we needed to find a way to start shifting the burden, the, the, all that burden away from the taxpayers. Uh, if you look at some of the larger cities in the United States and you'll see that the burden that they're under with the huge uh, public sector pension plans, uh, the ones that are like ours, which is a defined benefit plan, uh, uh, financed solely off the backs of the taxpayers, uh, we knew we had to get away from it. And there was one, one fellow on this board of commissioners uh, that I knew was chairman could guide us through everything we had to get through and get us to a point where we'd get to a divine contribution plan and, and shift that liability, start shifting that liability. And that was Commissioner Murphy. Uh, he took that task on as chairman of the uh, pension committee. Uh, we had a talk earlier in the year, you know, we've got to get it done this year. And that's about all we ever said to each other. And he got it done. He got it done. We have moved away from the old plan. Our current employees will stay on that defined plan if they want to. Uh, we're not cutting anybody out, just for the record. We're not going to cut anybody out of a pension. Uh, but all the new employees and any of the current employees that want to shift over to the defined contribution plan will have that option. But uh, I want to personally thank him because it meant a lot to me to see us make that move. Um, I'm not so sure that uh, we could have got it done in the time we got it done in, but he, he made it happen. So um, he, he's a man of integrity. He's a man of his word. And uh, he's all about getting results. And part of that is, uh, you know, having his town hall meetings, which a lot of you are aware of. Uh, he's very faithful in having those town hall meetings. He heard from the public. Um, and, you know, my hat's off to him. I went to most of them, not all of them, but I went to most of them. And, um, you know, this day and age, you're going to hear. You're going to hear what's on people's minds, and he was willing to hear that. So, uh, you know, he was, a, he was a heck of a commissioner for District 2. Um, they may wake up one day and miss him. They may say today that they ain't going to miss him, but I tell you what, I think they will at the end of the day. But you've done a, you've done a great job uh, coming from a fellow commissioner. Uh, I know the work you put into it. I know the work Bob Coleman has put into his uh, position as uh, commissioner. Uh, it is a thankless job, but you don't come on here to get thanked. You come on here to make a difference, and both of you have made a difference, and I want to... Thank you both for all you've done. If I could take a moment to say, just say a few things. I, you know, very, yes, very kind words. I appreciate them very much. Um, I have thought a lot about uh, what we've been able to accomplish uh, these past four years. Um, I think of them both as tangible things we can see and touch and feel and the intangible. The intangible, we, we address some problems that uh, you know, I've been hearing about as, as, as needing at least attention and, 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 and input, and they included the uh, defined uh, contribution plan that we created, and I'm, I'm glad you, you reminded everybody that the current employees are, are fully uh, allowed to stay within the defined benefit plan if they, they wish. Uh, we, we got past a golf cart ordinance that, that brought our 
local uh, ordinance in line with state law so our uh, officers have something uh, a little bit uh, more solid to work with as they see violations out there We've got a short-term rental uh, ordinance accomplished and myself and scott mcquade and uh, chris michael participated in a zoom conference out of austin texas today where the moderator was very complimentary of all the work that that we did in getting that done and in, in the we i would include uh, aaron mumford and Catherine down <coughs> but it was a second annual conference they had in austin texas they had 350 uh, participants via zoom and it was not only in our country it was worldwide and they had nothing but great things to say about glenn county and the work that we as a commission had accomplished the tangible, uh, of course, uh, I really uh, worked hand in glove uh, with Dave Austin, who took, uh, took you know, I guess, his, uh, his uh, command decision to, uh, to, to not be with us tonight. Uh, I know he's, he's listening because he sent me a text, but, you know, with, with him and, and, and the men and women in his department, uh, we've really got a lot accomplished. And I also relied on Pam Thompson and the community development a lot. But when you think about it, we got several of the projects mentioned uh, you know accomplished they were not easy they were not well received necessarily at the time but as we drive down the roads uh, Demery Frederica East Beach use the new uh, roundabouts look at how uh, nice the cleanup on the stretch of Frederica Road along the airport uh, uh, has been how well the drainage project in uh, in the village works we've had some very very heavy storms and I can tell you the flooding is, is a thing of the past. Hopefully the hurricanes will stay away. But uh, as, I, as, I, as I walk uh, with my beautiful wife who decided to uh, come tonight to make sure I did in fact get a plaque to certify that I was done, she, <laughs> she wanted to have absolute certainty that I was done, Mr. Chairman. But uh, when we take our, our walks with our dog, I, you know, I'm struck now uh, with the rock revetment project and I'm very proud to have been part of the team uh, that went up to Atlanta four years ago and several of us here at the dais were sitting in uh, Chris Riley's office hearing that Governor Deal had 10 million dollars for Tybee and St. Simons Island for hurricane relief and did we want it and there was silence in the room because it was there was so much controversy in the past about beach renourishment and we were going to put sand down and get blown away by the, the wind and the tides. Fortunately, uh, uh, I being uh, young and sort of naive, I just said, why the heck wouldn't we want that money? Yeah, we'll take it. And through Catherine Down's hard work, uh, two and a half million dollars has been put in the rock revetment project. And those of you who have not gone down there need to walk through Neptune Park and along that area, that stretch. We've added three feet of protection to this island. And I think back that when President Johnson was here back in uh, 64 and, and, and started the project after Hurricane uh, Dora, we're talking about 50 years of protection. So th those rocks, that revetment will be here long after all of us are gone. And a lot of St. Simons will still be here also. And I mean, to me, that's just an, you know, that's an awesome accomplishment that we all, we all achieved. Um, <clears throat> you mentioned the, the trees at Neptune Park. So, so Dave Austin and I and, and David O'Quinn met several times with many arborists, you know, with different opinions. And that's where we landed. We landed on these tree crutches. And yet yeah, does allow people to get back underneath those trees and have their picnics. And it's a fabulous sight. I, I love seeing it. But I can tell you, every time I walk past those trees, <laughs> I pray that they stay alive for a few more years <laughs> long after I'm gone and that we didn't make the wrong decision. I just don't know. But finally, the last thing is as, as we all roll out of here, yourself included, myself and Bob, and the rest of the ones winding up this year, probably the thing I'm most uh, proud about is, is we're leaving this, this county in just a fabulous fiscal condition. And that didn't happen just by accident. It took the hard work of Alan Hours, Catherine Downs, Tamara Munson. We've got a fully funded $30 million rainy day fund after three hurricanes. We still are owed a little bit of money by the uh, FEMA department. 
we've got an undesignated fund balance that all of us decided would be $15 million that now has $24 million in it. So as the new, new commission rolls on, uh, I, I, I think that they, they can really you know, rest easy that for the, for the foreseeable future, uh, this county is in a very strong fiscal, fiscal condition. And it was because of this commission and the administrative staff that we have uh, that that all happened. And so my wife said, driving over, I can't believe how quickly four years uh, went by, and it did go quickly. But uh, um, it's, been a, it, it's been an interesting run. And uh, finally, the chairman was very, very kind to me. I, I, as he was saying those kind words, I was thinking back when I was actually a candidate for this position, and, and I don't know if you remember this, but I went, we went to a, uh, uh, a candidate forum put on by the Republican women uh, of Glenn County, and it was out at a Baptist church on 341. Exactly, I remember. And, <laughs> and I made some comments, and this guy with, uh, you know, a nice-looking blue blazer and his rifleman tag up here and high and tight like he just came out of the military he got right in my face after i'd spoken back in the back i went who in the world is this guy and shortly thereafter i found out who he was and 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 we we were at, we were at each other's throat for a little bit of time but i gotta tell you you have been one fantastic chairman and a great friend and a great supporter and, and one of the things they get the biggest kick out of is, uh, not many people know this, uh, but there's not many people who text at 6 a.m. with one another and get a laugh out of it other than Peter Murphy and Mike Browning. So thank you for your leadership and thank you for your friendship. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> now we're gonna turn the floor over to Chairman, Vice Chairman Bill Brunson. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, certainly, the chairman has been involved in all those things that have previously been talked about, so I'm not going to reiterate those. And I'm sort of going to take a different uh, approach to Chairman Browning. Odds are he shouldn't even be here. 19-year-old um, kid dropped into the jungle bordering North Vietnam in Laos in 1970, didn't have much of a life expectancy. But he beat the odds and came home not in a body bag, but as a highly decorated combat veteran. I'm not sure what character trait allowed him to survive that ordeal facing death every day, but I can tell you it wouldn't be described as shrinking violet. I've often, uh, Mike has often sort of reminded me of Donald Trump without a Twitter account. You don't ever have to wonder where he's coming from. You don't ever have to know what he's thinking or, or where he is. A politician, he is not. I wanted to offer him the highest of compliments, um, but uh, Catherine Downs and Dwani Patel told me I just couldn't tell him that he's the worst politician I've ever known in my life. So I, I'm not going to say that tonight. But unlike most politicians, he's been a chairman and a commissioner focused on getting things done, and even more importantly than that, getting them done right. There's no greater evidence of that than the Veterans Memorial Park. Had its issues, had its cost overruns, unforeseeable cost overruns regarding drainage, and, and, but elect, elected to go forward and do it right. And there's, uh, it's a lasting, magnificent tribute to our veterans and to those who gave the ultimate sacrifice. And this guy was over there leading that charge through some very difficult times and very difficult decisions. Chairman Browning's been a stalwart in protecting the sanctity of the state constitution, and particularly home rule. He's adamant that our local government can serve our local community better than Atlanta can. You saved our police department. And through your leadership initiatives and those of Commissioner O'Quinn and our police advisory committee, our police department is headed to be one of the very best police departments in the state of Georgia. Mr. Chairman, you are a warrior for your country, and you've been a warrior for your community, sometimes to your political detriment.
You've led this county during a time that has been as tumultuous, divisive, and challenging as any time I've ever known in my lifetime. And as Dr. Murphy said, Mr. Chairman, you were the right chairman for that time. Well done, Commissioner. Chairman Brunson, um, I think you're right. I'm probably the worst politician ever walked the face of the earth. I know <laughs> you are. But I didn't, uh, and I take that as a compliment. I, I didn't, I never set out to be a politician, and I'm, I'm not going to work too hard at trying to be one. So um, I just try to, I've always had this county at heart, its best interest. And I just, uh, I traveled the path that would get me to where I think I need to be to serve, uh, you know, and do what I thought was right. Of course, you do that. Uh, it, it's, it's a joint effort, a uh, joint effort with your fellow commissioners, and it's a joint effort with staff. Um, too often, you know, you see the commissioners, uh, but they get the limelight, but staff, uh, you know, they're back there really doing all the work. They're doing the heavy lifting. And uh, they don't get the recognition that they deserve. And I've always wanted to take every opportunity that I could, and I'm going to take it tonight to thank uh, Alan Hours, who I think is just as fine a county manager as this county could ever have. Um, I've seen his leadership. I've seen how he executes. Uh, I, I, I see his desire to, to understand the direction that seven elected people are given to him. Sometimes it's not real clear, but uh, that's what he works off of. He works off the direction that we give. Uh, some of it's black and white in policy. Uh, it's in the budget. But uh, we're constantly talking about things, where we want to go, how we want to get there. And at the end of a conversation, he, he's looking, what, what, what did they just tell me? And, he, and he, I, I think he is the best in the world at trying to figure out how to accomplish what seven people that ramble through a two hour long meeting have said. You know what they wanted. We don't even know what we said sometimes, but, but, but that's 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 the job that he's up against, and uh, and then the staff that he's put together, uh, public works, uh, community development, uh, parks and recreation, administrative, all those folks are top notch. Uh, I can't thank them enough for what they do every day. Uh, some of them are seen out in public more than others, dealing with the public, and that, frankly, they take a beating they shouldn't take. Uh, I, I, I wish the public would just understand why they're there, what they're trying to do, and if they want to beat up on somebody, call me or Dr. Murphy before he gets off today, uh, you know, or one of these other commissioners. Uh, we're, we're the ones that should take the beating, but uh, we, we have a wonderful uh, administrative staff and then all the employees throughout our uh, county uh, you know we just had three come up here this evening uh, wanting to do good outside of their normal jobs uh, you know the battle of the badges and just 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 look at what they did uh, the biggest hearts you know and raising money for good causes uh, in addition to the work that they do. Uh, and again, it's kind of a thankless job they do too. You know, uh, too often people complain and, you know, we need to hear those complaints. Uh, you know, we need to hear what, what, what's going on and maybe we can look into them and maybe make something better. Uh, but uh, you get an opportunity to thank a police officer or a fireman or you walk into the tax office or probate office or someplace and you know th thank the people for what they're doing they they, they 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 too have a thankless job so but it's been my pleasure as a commissioner after eight years to serve this community uh i was honored that uh 
people in my district would put me in office for two terms. And uh, I see that they're very smart people. They decided I didn't need a third term. And you know, I think I agree with them. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I'm gonna thank them for, you know, allowing me to, you know, to be able now kind of go and come freely. Um, you know, I've got to thank my wife, Bonnie, uh, my son, Michael, daughter-in-law, Andrea, my granddaughters, Emmy, Maggie, uh, every time I'm with them, sooner or later, this old smartphone, it gets a hold of me and I, there's a phone call I just have to take or there's an email or there's a text. Uh, you know, if I'm spending time with them, I hate to be distracted, I need to give them all my time, but sometimes they're just things I have to take care of right then. And uh, they put up with that. And uh, these other commissioners have families. And, and their families put up with it. And uh, I'm sure they're just like my family. They, they don't say anything about it, but they probably like, golly, mom, couldn't he leave that phone alone just a little bit when he's with us? Well, most of the time you can, sometimes you can't. That's the nature of the job we're in. But uh, I don't think I'm going to miss the job, but I'm going to miss these guys and I'm going to miss our staff. Great people. Um, you know, just you got to have it in your heart to do this. You got to have it. You got to have your community in your heart. And uh, as bad as it is, or it might look, it's good. It is good to be able to have the trust of your community to come in and make decisions that affect everybody. And uh, you can't complain about that. So I just want to thank everybody and stay tuned. We're going to have a new commission coming in here in January. And uh, other than going down and presenting these plaques to the commissioners, leaving, we're going to do that. And then we're going to get on with the regular business here tonight. So Commissioner Murphy and Commissioner Coleman, y'all join me out front and we'll do this presentation. Then we're going to get on with the real business. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, the plaques, they have a photo of the courthouse looking from the G Street side. Uh, it kind of means a lot to me. I, when I was in junior high, back when they had junior high, not middle school, but junior high, down at Glen County Junior High, I would come in every day. I was, had to walk home from school, and uh, I'd, uh, about 55 years ago. <laughs> but uh, I'd walk up Union Street, and I'd come straight up to the courthouse steps and I'd walk up and I'd walk through the bottom of the courthouse and I'd walk down the steps on the other side. Didn't have the new courthouse back in those days. I'd just keep walking and never having any idea that I'd be up here at nighttime. <laughs> so many years later doing this. 
So uh, when I look at that picture, it, it, uh, it certainly means a lot to me. Uh, Mr. Okay. Chairman, that's half a century. Half, yeah, <laughs> half, half a century. Over half a century later. Th thank you, Commissioner Neal. You're welcome, sir. Uh, okay, uh, public hearing, alcoholic beverage license. Uh, public hearings will be limited to 30 minutes for each opposing side with five minutes allocated to each individual speaker. Comments are to be limited to relevant information regarding your position and should avoid being repetitious. If your group has a spokesperson, please allow that individual to present your group's position in the time allocated. Your cooperation in this process will be greatly appreciated. Item five, consider, it, consider the issuance of a 2020 alcoholic beverage license to Joseph Matos for J&D Beverage Incorporated, DBA, J&D Beverage, 5900 Altama Avenue, Suite 1, Brunswick, Georgia. The license is to sell malt beverages and wines not for consumption on premise of a convenience store. Sunday sales permitted, Joseph Matos, licensee. Um, Captain. Applicant, please, please stand. Mr. Chairman, fellow commissioners, the applicant meets all requirements as present required by the ordinance. Okay. Uh, this is a public, thank you, sir. Uh, this is a public hearing. Um, so anyone that opposes the application for a license, if they want to come up and speak, anyone that opposes the application, <coughs> Seeing none, hearing none, anyone that's in <laughs> favor that wants to come up and speak? Anyone in favor wants to come up and speak? Okay, hearing none, seeing none, I'll close the floor to, for the public hearing on this application. Uh, <laughs> commissioners? Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the issue of 2020 alcohol beverage license to J&D Beverage, Inc., DBA, J&D Beverage, 5900 Altama Avenue, Suite 1, uh, Brunswick, Georgia, 31525. The license to sell malt beverages and wines not for consumption on premises of a convenience store, Sunday sales permitted, Joseph Matos, license E. Second. Commissioner, to have a motion and second on the floor. Any discussion? I'll call the vote. Those in favor signify by raising your right hand. That is unanimous. Sir, you have your license. Thank you, sir. Uh, item six, <clears throat> consider the issuance of a 2021, excuse me for a minute here. Is that right? Okay, the last one's 2020. Okay. Consider the issuance of a 2021 alcoholic beverage license to Apichat Pinkham for Tupton Thai 999 LLC DBA Tupton Thai Restaurant, 250 Golden Isles Plaza, Suite 100, Brunswick, Georgia. The license is to sell malt beverages and wines for consumption on premise of a restaurant, Sunday sales permitted, uh, Apichat Pinkham, licensee, uh, <coughs> Captain Stalby. Applicant, please, please stand. Mr. Chairman, fellow commissioners, the applicant meets all requirements and is present required by the ordinance. Okay. Uh, thank you, Captain. Okay, public hearing item. Uh, anyone uh, that opposes application, if they want to come up and speak in opposition? Okay. Anyone that opposes application? Okay, hearing none, seeing none, anyone that supports the application wants to come up and speak. Uh, anyone wants to come up and speak in favor of the application? Uh, hearing none, seeing none, we'll close the floor to the public hearing and I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman, oh, for a motion to um, for the issuance of 2021 alcoholic beverage license to Applejack Pinkham for Tupton Thai 999 LLC DBA Tupton Thai Restaurant 250 Golden Isles Plaza Suite 100 Brunswick, Georgia. The license is to sell more um, beverages 
and wine for consumption on premises of the restaurant. Sunday sales permitted, Apple Chat Pinkton's license. Second. Uh, we have a motion and a second. Uh, any discussion? I'll call the motion. All those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. And that is unanimous. And, sir, you have your license. Thank you. <coughs> Item 7, consider the issuance of a 2021 alcoholic beverage license to Ryan Carrier for Pop Restaurant Group, DBA, Dolce Doe, Donuts, and Bakery, 1624 Frederica Road, Suite 1, St. Simons Island, Georgia. The license is to sell wine only for consumption on premise of a wine specialty shop. No Sunday sales permitted. Ryan Carter, licensee. Uh, Captain Stelvey. Applicant. Uh, Mr. Chairman, fellow commissioners, applicant meets all requirements and is present required by the ordinance. Okay, thank you. Uh, this is a public hearing item. Uh, I'll open the floor for anyone opposed to the application. Anyone opposed to application wants to come up and speak? Okay. Uh, anyone in favor that wants to come up and speak? Anyone in favor of the application wants to come up and speak? Okay. I'm going to close the floor for the public comment, public hearing portion. And uh, commissioners? Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to issue a 2021 alcoholic beverage license to Ryan Carrier for Pop Restaurant Group, DBA, Dolce Doe Donuts and Bakery, 1624 Frederica Road, Suite 1, St. Simons Island. The license is to sell wine only for consumption on, presidents, on premise of a wine specialty shop. No Sunday sales permitted. Second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, any discussion? <coughs> I call the motion. All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. That is unanimous. Uh, you have your license. Okay, congratulations. Thank you. Uh, public hearing abandonment, uh, item A, AB4476. Consider the abandonment of all of Sylvan Drive north of the northern right of way line of Palm Street with a drainage easement in form acceptable to the county engineer being returned to the county over the area in block seven, currently used for a drainage ditch, as shown on the site plan developed for the Glenhaven Baptist Church site. Uh, clerk's note, the board held a public hearing on this matter at their meeting on December 3rd, 2020. Uh, just to tell y'all where we are with this thing, um, we have had the public hearing. Uh, we deferred it. The reason we deferred it, there's a couple here, the um, parents that had questions about what was going on, we couldn't seem to get them satisfied while we were here, so we deferred it to allow staff time to work with them. Uh, there was a discussion after the meeting with them. There was a phone call made uh, soon after that. Uh, they didn't produce any documentation or anything. There were there was a letter sent to them there were two or three more phone calls made they didn't respond and then even today finally uh we were able to make contact with them on a phone call and they said that they have no issues moving forward they found their paperwork everything looked good so they have no issues in this so we have put that behind us uh so um we are back to where we were at the end of the meeting before we got tied up with the uh, parents. Since we've resolved that, uh, commissioners, this item is in your lap. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to uh, make a motion to abandon all of Sylvan Drive north of the northern right of way line of Palm Drive with a drainage easement in a form acceptable to the county engineer being returned to the county over the area in block seven currently used for a drainage ditch. As shown on the site plan developed by the Glenhaven Baptist Church site. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Uh, any discussion, commissioners? Okay, no discussion. I'll call the vote. All those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. That is unanimous. Uh, thank you. Mr. Chairman, uh, motion to approve consent agenda general business and consent agenda finance uh, committee, unless there's an item that a commissioner wishes to pull for discussion. 
Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? I call the motion. All those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. Mr. Mr. I thought you was going to wreck oh, for consent agenda. Right. I wanted to pull to uh, 12 and 13. No, you want to pull 12 and 13? Right. I, th I was waiting for you to say something. <laughs> I'm sorry. All right. Uh, motion. You want to, is your motion to approve everything except 12 and 13? Yes. I mean, yeah, but that's fine. Okay. Okay, we have a motion, second, to approve consent agenda, general business and finance, with the exception of 12 and 13. Uh, all those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. Okay, that's unanimous. Item 12, accept the bid received from government consulting, uh, RFP number 01180 and award the contract to governmental consulting to write and administer the community development block grant to make improvements to the College Park stormwater drainage basin pending the Department of Community Affairs approval. Um, you want Pam to, you, you, you want to, you, you want to say something now while we pull it? Yeah, yeah actually, uh, I have the same Actually, I have the same, um, excuse me, I'm having some hearing aid problems <laughs> if y'all hear that feedback. Um, actually, the same deal on, on each one of them. Uh, my question is this, uh, I noticed on here it said uh, that the on 12, government consulting to write and administer the community development block grant to make improvements to the College Park stormwater administer to write and administer the community development block grant and then in item 13 you got basically the same thing the community development block grant from the johnson rocks that out of the government consulting to write and administer the community development block grant oh does that mean we're we're paying these folks to um write and uh, write these grants is that is that is that what they're saying uh, on these? I'm, I'm Commissioner Coleman, uh, Pamela Thompson, Director of Community Development. These are the funds, if you recall, that have been set aside since Hurricane Irma and the tornadoes in Southwest Georgia to provide uh, mitigation project relief to help uh, certain communities become more resilient to storms. And as part of that, in those funds, there are some fees to administer that. And so the bids before you tonight writing the grant is actually no cost with the contract being that if that grant is awarded that group will then administer the grant and when we say administer the grant we're talking about all of the paperwork and documentation that we're meeting all the guidelines and requirements of that grant the actual physical project of course will be managed by the contractor that it's awarded to but uh, this grant consultant as proposed will come in um, and work with Monica Hardy of our finance staff to write the grant, prepare it for funding, and then assuming it's awarded, uh, then she will receive funding through that grant. It's not out of the, the county's funds to administer that. It involves uh, quarterly reporting, tracking of invoices, and making sure we're following federal guidelines and spending that money. Okay, well, that was that was my biggest question there. Where where does Monica come in in this program, in this picture? Because I mean, I knew we had a grant writer on on staff here. Yes, sir. She has been doing the lion's share of researching this since uh, these funds were set aside. When these funds um, and programs were created, it was actually assigned to the Department of Community Affairs to administer this program, and they've spent the last two and a half years creating the program and the program guidelines. Uh, the guidelines are very complex. When federal money's involved, there are a lot more um, things you have to prove to make sure you're being fair to people, fair to the environment, and using those taxpayer dollars wisely. And so um, Monica, in working with the administration team, felt that because those 
because the funds can use to pay for that additional professional help, that it would be in our best interest to have professional assistance working with us on that. Um, if for some reason, if we did it all in house and, and missed some of those requirements, there's there's potential negative impact to the community or in the county. So we thought it was better to get professional assistance to work with Monica and do that. But that consulting firm will actually administer, handle all that paperwork, um, and Monica will be our county liaison to monitor this contract, these two contracts before you this evening. Okay, so with that said, then what you're saying, or am I hearing what you're saying that this is not actually kind of like a double payment, if you will, as far as expense to to the county? To the county, no, sir. Mm -hmm. No, sir, it's not. Um, them helping Monica write the application is no cost to the county, and then if the contracts are awarded, then they will, um, they will be doing the work of turning in all the paperwork, verifying that we're meeting those guidelines, and their fee will be paid out of grant funds, so no cost to the county for that. Okay, okay thank you. That's 12 and 13. <laughs> okay. So so you're good to go with them? <coughs> yes, sir. I mean, okay. That's fine. I just know Monica did a lot of, a lot of paperwork and grant work for us, and then I didn't see her name in this anywhere, and that, 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 was, that was my yeah. concern. Thank you. Yeah, I got to tell you, if you could look at my forward, I don't know if I have a forward file, but... Um, a lot of grant opportunities are sent to me, I guess, because I'm chairman. And man, I I hit that forward and I send them right to uh, <coughs> Monica. Sometimes I got an idea that maybe this is something under community development also, so I get Monica and Pam, or maybe Monica and Pam, Dwani, but man, I'm forwarding stuff all the time. There's a lot of opportunities. <laughs> a lot of opportunities to come up for grants. So, um, you know, you got to, um, and, and, and I'm afraid that I, if, if I don't read all these emails I get, I may miss that there's a grant opportunity in there someplace. And so, because uh, trash can files easy to put stuff in sometimes, you know, so have to be careful. Okay, uh, Bob, uh, thank you, and Pam, thank you. Um, commissioners, yeah, we need to get a motion for. Yeah, I'll make a motion. I move to approve the bid received from government consulting RFP 01180 and award the contract to this firm pending attorney and DCA's approval. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? I call the motion. Uh, all those in favor signify by raising your right hand. That is unanimous. I got item 13. It was 12, I think. Hmm? Yeah, that was no, 12. Now yeah, now 13. No, 13. Yeah. Do you want to make a motion? Yeah, for 13. No discussion? Can, can, no. Got anything to say? No, I, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to give you that opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, no Mo, Mo, I'm glad you said it. Monica has been fabulous for us. I'd like to make a motion to approve a bid received from government consulting RFP number 01181 and award the contract to this firm pending attorney and DCA's approval. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? I call the motion. All those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. And that is unanimous. Thank you, commissioners. Uh, general business, item 20. Consider approving a one-time cost of living adjustment for full-time and part-time staff with the amount to be determined by the board. Um, Alan Hours is prepared to Give us a briefing on that, aren't you, Alan? Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Commissioners. <clears throat> What's before you tonight is to consider a, a one-time cost of living adjustment for county employees. This would be a one-time payment to all full-time and part-time county employees and would not permanently increase their base salary. These calculations do not include seasonal workers, temporary workers, elected officials, Poll workers or supplemental workers whose primary salary is paid by another entity. 
Uh, this matter was uh, went before the Finance Committee. The Finance Committee voted unanimously to take this to the Board of Commissioners. And then uh, this item was also considered by the Personnel Committee, uh, who met earlier this week, and they recommended uh, unanimously approval uh, for this. A little background, uh, earlier this year, because of the uncertainty of the year, uh, when we developed the budget in March, the county was unable to provide a cost of living adjustment or a merit increase for uh, county employees. As the year has progressed, revenue collections have been stronger than anticipated, and as Dr. Murphy reported earlier, the county is in excellent financial condition. In the spirit of employee appreciation, throughout this very challenging year, a request was made by some of you uh, to bring this forward to the entire Board of Commissioners. And so what's before you tonight is to provide uh, one-time uh, cost of living adjustment to full-time employees and, and part-time employees and part-time employees. Uh, most part-time employees work 29 hours a week, and so that percentage-wise of the 40-hour week is 72.5%. So the idea being for the net amount for employees uh, to be around $1,000, uh, the gross amount would be $1,225 for each uh, full-time employee, and the gross amount for each part-time employee is $888, uh, which nets around $725. And the breakdown in your agenda package uh, per fund is included, and I'll be glad to answer any questions that you may have. Mr. Hours, what was the total for the whole, the whole deal? The total, Commissioner Coleman, is one million one hundred eighty-five thousand dollars. Excuse me, one million one hundred eighty-five thousand nine hundred forty-seven dollars and sixty-three cents. Just got one comment. <laughs> Y'all left out us seven guys Win Dixie's debit card to go get us something to eat. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Oh, you, did, you didn't get one? I, I got, got one. I've got two. I guess I got, I may have gotten your, yours. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, um, I offer a motion. I move to approve a one-time cost of living adjustment for full-time county employees in the gross amount of $1,225 each and for part-time county employees in the gross amount of $888 each with funding to be provided by undesignated fund balance in each fund. Second. I have a motion and a second. Uh, any discussion? I'll call the motion. Call those in favor. Signify by raising your right hand. That is unanimous. Uh, thank you, Alan. Alan Hours. Uh, item 21. Consider approving a contract for services with Nationwide Retirement Solutions and approving a 401A trust agreement with Nationwide Trust Company for the provision of 401A defined contribution plan services. Uh, Ms. Reed. Good evening, commissioners. As you recall at your last meeting, um, we brought before you the, uh, the bid for our defined contribution plan for, for the 401A plan, um, and you awarded that to Nationwide Retirement Solutions. At that time, um, we also presented to you that there were two types of contracts um, for your consideration, one being a trust, a trust or custodial account, and the other being um, a variable annuity account. So uh, you asked that we take this back to the personnel committee and have them review it. We did, and um, we have on a call um, Ed Emerson, Edmund Emerson, who is our plan counsel for the defined benefit plan, who has guided us through this process, along with our actuaries, um, Nyhart, who can give you a very good explanation of the difference between a variable annuity um, account and um, the trust custodial account. So with that, Ed. 
Good evening, commissioners. Can, can, can you all hear me? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, yes, I'll try to keep this brief, but the, the two contract options, um, one being a trust account and one being a variable annuity account. Um, the trust account is what's most commonly used in new plans nowadays, new defined contribution plans and new 457B plans. I work with several governmental entities throughout the state and almost all of those are being set up under a trust platform at this time. The trust platform would basically is, is probably what most of you guys think of, most of you think of when um, you set up a, a retirement account or have a, a an IRA, basically you can invest in mutual funds and other other investment funds. And your actual, the actual accounting is done on a share accounting basis. So you, the registered shares under the trust will be a direct reflection of what you're investing in. A variable account, a variable annuity accounting um, use a uh, variable annuity uses what is called unit accounting. You may have the same investment funds, same mutual funds, but you are, but all those funds are pooled in this variable annuity contract, and then you're issued a unit in that fund. And there's usually some built-in um, slush in there for cash and liquidity purposes and so forth. And historically, the variable annuity funds were set up, were used by, you know, retirement plans in the past, his, and um, because a lot of the products were offered by insurance companies, and that was really their main avenue and ability to offer these products was through a variable annuity or group annuity contract. Um, I've reviewed these options with the personnel committee and uh, you know, gave my recommendation that we move forward on a trust platform to them. And I believe that that was approved by the personnel committee and, and, and provided um, that, they, that the recommendation to this, to you as board of commissioners would be to approve the uh, contract on the trust um, agreement platform, the trust platform versus the variable annuity platform. Um, I, I'll turn it over to questions if anybody has any this time. So if I could just make a couple comments. Uh, Ms. Reed and uh, Mr. Emerson uh, gave this presentation of the personnel committee and really uh, was very clear and I think all three of us, myself, Commissioner Neal and Commissioner Coleman, came down on the side of uh, following uh, Mr. Emerson's recommendation that we choose the uh, trust type of investment uh, platform in that it seems to be, you know, what, what the more modern uh, defined contribution plans are using. There's no increase in fees. The, uh, the uh, uh, investment options that Ms. Reed has on our report uh, just as many as anyone could possibly need. Um, and so, you know, uh, that, that being the situation, I, I, I think that, uh, you know, we were all comfortable in moving forward with the, uh, with the trust type of platform. You'll make a motion, I'll second it. I'll make a motion then, if, uh, unless you've got something else to say, Ms. Reed. Uh, no, except for the, the contracts have been uh, vetted by the attorney's office. Um, so a lot of work from Will Worley along with Ed uh, to get that done. Okay, well, let's see. So uh, I will make a motion uh, to uh, approve the contract for services with Nationwide Retirement Solutions and approve a 401A trust agreement with Nationwide Trust Company for the provision of a 401A defined contribution plan services. Second. We have a motion second. Uh, we have a motion and second. Any discussion? I'll call the motion. All those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. That is unanimous. Thank you. Uh, mm -hmm. Item 22, 
authorize an increase in revenues and expenditures in the amount of $76,000 with funding provided by Capital Projects Fund Balance for the purchase placement of additional rock for the One Georgia Grant uh, Revetment Maintenance Project. Uh, You're gonna, you're gonna yes, tell us a bit. I, I think we know what this is about. All right. <laughs> Commissioners, uh, Paul Andrews, County Engineer. Uh, yes, sir, this item uh, was, we presented uh, this at the workshop earlier this week. Tuesday. Um, this item is a uh, response to y'all's request to bring forward an item to the board that would um, authorize ad additional funds going to this grant are going to this project. Um, again, this is the uh, general work area for the project. Um, as approved, they're working on now. Uh, a couple of pictures, these, these are um, ones that were seen in the, uh, in the workshop. These are the installation of the rock going in. Uh, the original contract amounts uh, as awarded. This is uh, where, we, where it, we're projecting a shortfall of the rock from the um, original estimated amounts. Um, these were the two areas of lower priority work that were authorized in the original contract uh, that at the workshop we had discussed, um, <coughs> excuse me, reprioritizing funds out of these to buy additional rock. The uh, staff had prepared several al alternatives for your consideration. Um, first would be to authorize additional funds in the amount of uh, $100,000 that uh, would would cover the whole of the shortfall, the whole of the shortfall, anticipated shortfall on the rock, and keep the rest of the work items fully funded uh, for the original contract. Coming down from that would be to fund uh, an amount not to exceed. Uh, 76,000, that would be additional funds uh, for rock purchase, but would also include reallocation of the uh, lower priority, the, the, the sand stockpiling that was in the original contract. Uh, coming down from that would be to authorize additional funds in the amount of uh, 63,000. That would include reprioritizing both the sand stockpile, the, the beach compatible sand, and the uh, dune fencing that was in the original contract. Or if you, if you have an alternative, we can move forward with. Uh, staff is recommending alternative two. That's uh, to um, authorize 76,000 and um, staff would then reprioritize the uh, beach compatible sand fill to purchase additional rock also. Um, reason staff is recommending this is we don't have a current the use for the beach compatible sand it was uh, this this having the contractor in place moving heavy uh, moving material gave us an opportunity to bring this to the county and stockpile it for future needs if we need it when a storm comes we need to work on the beach if we had projects that needed that that um, beach quality sand is what they call it. It's, it's not just any sand. They have to go out and get sand that's, that's beach quality that's able to be put on the beach. It's readily available. If in the future we do have that need, we can, uh, it can be brought in for the uh, need as it arises. So uh, Steph uh, suggested that we keep the dune fencing in place and that that is um, in line with the uh, shoreline protection plan that was uh, prepared and uh, presented and accepted as, as how we move forward with our shorelines was to do not only structural um, st stabilization, but to do these non-structural elements. And a recommended motion. So, so will this be enough uh, money, Paul, to, to complete the rock revetment project as, as it's been laid out? Yes, sir. Okay. To place all the all the rock that was originally in the contract, and we'll do the dune fencing, but we won't have the the beach compatible sand. It, that that's the alternative that's presented to you, yes, sir. But if, but if our past is any indication of the future, we just need a mild nor'easter to come by, and we'll get a bunch of that sand that's on Sea Island that'll 
stack right up there, Gould, Gould's Inlet, and move on down, huh? Well, that's, that's been recent years, yes, sir. <laughs> I, 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 I like your recommendation. Um, <clears throat> Mr. Andrews, could you tell me exactly where the dunes fencing is going? I've, I've never been quite sure where exactly that's going to be placed. I'd like to know. Absolutely. Um, this is the uh, the work area. Um, as Commissioner Murphy had indicated, we uh, the, the St. Simons has had a lot of accretion of sand, mostly in the area north of um, Massengale Park. That area, ha the sand in that area has grown. Uh, what this, what the sand fencing would do would be to try to stabilize. We're, right now, we're focusing in this area as the most likely area for successful sand fencing, just try, try to stabilize that accreted sand so that uh, vegetation can grow on it. Okay, thank And you. provide that protection through a non-structural means. Thank you. Yes, sir. We ready for a motion there, Chief? Yes. Okay, I'd like to make a motion uh, to authorize an increase in revenues and expenditures in the amount of $76,000 with funding from the capital projects fund balance for the purchase and placement of additional rock for the one Georgia grant uh, revetment maintenance project. Second. So we have a motion second. Any discussion? Okay, I'll call the motion. All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. That is unanimous. Uh, thank you, Paul. Thank you, Commissioners. Uh, Mr. Turney, do we have anything for executive session? Commissioners, we do. I know uh, the outgoing commissioners uh, want to have one last uh, executive session. So uh, if we could have one for uh, <laughs> pending litigation and uh, property disposal matters, please. Yeah. Do you need me back there? <laughs> I, I do. Uh, we need a motion. What we was need a motion. Pen, pending litigation and what? And property disposal. Need a, need a motion. Chairman, move we go into executive session for pending litigation and property disposal. Second. Got a motion and a second. All those in favor? Let's see the right hands. All right. Unanimous. Member Rob. We are.
All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 We are out of executive session. We're back in regular session. All right, Mr. Chairman, move to uh, we'll approve the executive session minutes of the December 3rd, 2020 meeting. Second. 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 We got a motion and a second. All those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. That is unanimous. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the county manager's recommendation regarding property disposal. Second. Got a motion and a second. All those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. That is unanimous. Abstain. Abstain. Huh? I abstain. Oh, we got uh, six four and one abstention. I uh, move to settle uh, Mary Lee Lyburn's pending workman's comp claim in the amount of $70,000. Second. Got a motion and a second. Uh, all those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. That is unanimous. We got one more? Huh? Yeah, we got one more. What are they mumbling about down there? Shop talk, shop talk. I move to approve and ratify the final resolution and consent judgment in the Sea Island Acquisition LLC v. Glenn County, Georgia, civil action number CE 20-00985, wherein the title related consequences of the court order in Glenn Environmental Coalition, Inc. et al. versus Sea Island Acquisition uh, SIA. Properties to LLC at all civil action number CE 16-0025-063 on property involved in a 1982 property exchange are clarified and confirmed in quick claim deeds. And the affected properties are executed by the parties in a manner consistent with the judgments in these cases. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. Oh, to get a little over. That is unanimous. Uh, thank you, Vice Chairman. Thank you, Commissioners. This meeting is adjourned.